Welcome I almost to missed my line. Binary Jazz. <laughs> it's a podcast about things. You realize that um so there's a there's a like a beat drop in the intro music that yeah. we use. And I have been like the got it that you do. I, I every time I, I do this, I, I'm tempted to cut out the got it, but I but I've actually been using it as a marker. Um, so that I, it, it got it right at the beat drop. And that's, so it's like, got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all For anybody not in the know, Zoom lets us know when we started recording with a big annoying screen and you, that lets you know you're being recorded. And instead of saying yes or okay, the button is titled, got it which okay yeah i feel like that's a product of the free version of zoom too because i think that i don't see that message except when i'm on calls hosted by free zoom mm -hmm. which is and and also unfortunately so like so we use free zoom obviously uh peek behind the curtain uh for listeners uh and um that's easy and we use it as a mechanic of the show because obviously we get cut off at the end uh and that has been treated as a feature not a bug um because it means that we wrap up after about 40 minutes and don't need to worry about like figuring out an ending to this uh and whenever we do have longer calls we kind of like don't know how to end it so like it's it's better than it just it's better it's rarely way. happened thankfully um because it is awkward we're like well I guess I'll see you Bye, around. I guess. <laughs> Harper humans end these things. But that's um, how I am in real life with yeah. ending conversations. Like, that's just the real Allison experience. I mean, when it's I... worked best is when Gary just drops. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just, like, abruptly, like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going camera off a lot recently at work because that's been, there's been just some enormous meetings. Uh, and a lot of people have been trending that way. I, in fact, I've sort of been on, like, a holdout. Like, always camera on. Mm -hmm. Um, and I recently have been going camera off, which is, I don't know. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> I think it depends on what, what's going on. Like I try to, I like giving people some sort of visual feedback. If someone's giving a, like a talk where they're not <laughs> doing a PowerPoint, do you know what I mean? Like, cause yes. if someone is doing a full screen PowerPoint, they can't see people anyway, generally most of the time, I don't think. Yeah, because the, well, hmm. it kind of depends on their settings. Yeah, so it's like if someone's giving a presentation, I want to show them that like I'm that there's someone here like paying attention. But like if if it's just like monotonous, I don't know. I can't. I, um, I can't think of an example without incriminating myself. I I have been socialized to like have camera on all the time, mm -hmm. no matter what, uh, from mm -hmm. past uh, gigs, but. Uh, Pantheon is a much larger company and d does not have that sort of socialization and it's like a fight to get people to turn their cameras on so you'll have and, and part of it is because you have a call with like 200 people on it and like obviously not everyone's going to do that but even within smaller calls with like you know 15 engineers or something or 10 engineers there will be like one or two that have their camera on and everyone else will have camera off and that's like I get it, but also like you can turn your camera on, and I know your computer has one, so like <laughs> for for one on one, like absolutely on for um for small team stuff, absolutely. I guess like when the number gets around like eight or ten and above, like I'm a little more ambivalent these days than I used to be. I I think well that about it, everything. My, actually, my threshold is is larger than is larger than that. My threshold would be like. 20 or so yeah um, but i also work with like that many people easily yeah. um but I, like, I wonder if it's the um momentum of the organization that, that i number, think it is like defaults to yes because yes. for us like small team is like maybe seven people so we cross that threshold that means another team is involved and now like the camera like it, it means like people are like oh it's them <laughs> i guess <laughs> yeah i think that's definitely a thing um, I also think that um, uh, I also think that it's easier to hide 
which is the reason why I don't like the camera off is because like, and even for myself, like, and even in those same calls, uh, when I started going to some of these like cross team, like leadership uh, meetings, I would have my camera off partially because of imposter syndrome, because like, I don't feel like I really need, I don't feel like I really am important enough to be here. So I'm just going to silently like sneak in and not say anything and then sneak out at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I don't like, I, I think that that's, that's the thing. Like that's the, that's the, the, the pro and the con of, um, of not having your camera on is, is that, you know, it, it fosters that behavior of, quietly sneaking in and sneaking out and not being noticed but also like that reinforces the existence of that sort of behavior and assumption i think i'll go the complete opposite way though i was on a dev team not long ago where there were four developers and we would hop on a call and three would have cameras on and mm -hmm. one would be off um and like the the inherent reporter's result of that like there was very clearly like uh, an odd person out and it was a developer that never turned on the camera. And I'm like, that. I don't know if it wasn't obvious to them. Um, the or other, the other, but honestly, like the other subtext, the and they got burned for it. So whatever. Yeah, the, the other subtext, they got their comeuppance. <laughs> the other subtext of 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 being the one person or being a person who consistently does not have their camera on is that, like, it it adds to the sort of. You know the internet is full of anonymous assholes and it's the anonymity that makes people assholes and even if you know the person if all you're seeing is a picture or an avatar then there it's easier to i think be an asshole um because or or even give the impression that you're being an asshole when you're not intentionally being an asshole because nobody can see your facial expressions mm -hmm. um, um we had a um uh an engineer who's no longer with us um who always they died? No, we oh, left the company. That. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> not that dramatic. Uh, he left I, the company. I, I had. Uh, I'm sorry. I actually got that phone call from someone on Tuesday about someone else and used that language. And I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, we can say dead. Like it's someone I know um, decently well, but not like he oh. he uh, consistently did not have his camera on on calls even small calls even one-on-ones or like one on like a few um would almost never have his camera on and yeah. my perception of him was certainly that he was an asshole um because he was very loud and opinionated and said his loud and opinionated opinions very loudly and opinionatedly like and like in in a way that like didn't it, didn't offer any room for like discussion or argument it sounds to me like this is actually like the that the act of turning off the camera was just like a part of being an asshole and i, I, I don't like i don't it, know maybe mm, it just sounds like yeah. an asshole yeah i i it could be um I, I don't i don't know i don't know i'm not inside of his brain so i don't know but it definitely did not detract from that perception mm. um and uh, i mean there were occasions when i did actually see his real live face on on camera but they were very few and far between um, so that was that, that, that again, person ugly. No, not particularly. Come on, please make some kind of value judgment here, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> on the flip side, though, beardy. it it takes a lot of energy. <laughs> I I understand camera off because it takes a lot of energy to like engage, make fake eye contact, um, like do all the thing. I don't know, do all the things. And if you don't have a dedicated office space, maybe or yeah, yeah, you're sharing space with others. Like I was just like, there's like all sorts of other kind of weird things that come into play, but like it doesn't really shift how people perceive that. But I'm always trying to be like, this person might have had a shit day and they just need to have their camera off. I mean, I, this this person that I'm thinking of too also shared his uh, entire desktop instead of a window at some point on some call. And I happened to notice that there is some uh, like real-time strategy type game running in the background, like that was on pause or something, or maybe even still running. I don't know, like yeah. like processing resources or something. Um, <laughs> but but like it was definitely there's definitely like it was something in the background. I'm like, oh, so that's that's what you do all day. That's cool. That's what's really happening. Yeah. <laughs> that that's why your camera's off. <laughs> I had um, a call a couple weeks ago with um, a very difficult internal team, um, and. Uh, 
I, I'm like the technical person on this call. I, so I sort of lead the call. And um, uh, I, I always like, this is one that I show up with cameras on because I'm, I'm talking and I'm, you know, it encourages other people to cameras on. And we actually have, you know, I can say things that I can see when they don't understand, or they can ask me questions and they can see when I'm not quite clear. It, like the, the body language is important. Um, and in the context of the call, they were like, we love being on calls with you because your background is always so interesting. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, thank you. Which, uh, I mean, I am pandering a little bit. I've got like space posters and like, <laughs> tech and crap behind, like not, be, well, I guess I should show that if I'm going to talk. But you come by, you come by it honestly though. I You're do. Not, That's it's the not story. like you just put up the space posters at the beginning <laughs> of the day. Right. <laughs> right no they don't i don't I take it's five o'clock it's time to start taking the posters down you don't change your background based on who you're talking to yeah but then i will throw another um counterpoint in are you doing for cameras off um we have a colleague i have a colleague that uses assistive technology and so they are um reading transcripts live transcripts as conversations are happening so there's no benefit for them to have camera on because they're over here in the corner reading transcripts while listening mm -hmm. just trying to make sure they they capture everything so like camera on you would get a nice eyebrow view i guess i don't know <laughs> it's like that's that that actually uh thank you for the segue gary because i was gonna i wanted to talk about the other thing that we miss out on uh by not having a pro uh zoom account or using a pro zoom account mm. uh which is uh zoom apparently can do like uh transcriptions and captioning uh yeah. which is a thing that we've like you know sideline wanted to do for accessibility for since we've been doing this thing uh but you know transcription services are expensive um and uh google's auto uh subtitle thing sucks so uh i don't turn that on <laughs> um, do you know who's just really good though slack uh, have you used slack i huddles? haven't used slack no slack huddles i think just enabled transcripts um oh wait maybe i'm confused I, mm, I might be confused. Yes, they did. Yes, real time. But you can also two things. So re real time. Secondarily, if you upload a video, it will transcribe spoken word in the video within seconds of upload. And mm. I, I don't know how it's doing it, but it's really, really good. Mm. Um, I've been able to watch videos on mute and read dialogue and understand, or I guess monologue and understand the demo someone is showing. Uh, I'm, I mean, of course, it gets technical things wrong, but you know, like inside whatever project abbreviations. And I mean, obviously NASA, everything's an abbreviation. So Interesting. that's like whatever, but it, it's very, very good. So probably I'm not proposing we leave. That's what you should do. You should upload this to Slack and see if Slack can caption it. But it's probably paid Slack. No? Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. It, it, um, I'm guessing it probably is. I saw, can we huddle? I think we can it was huddle. West Boss yeah, was tweeting about using chat GBT's um, API to do transcripts and how much oh. it would cost per like length of podcast, mm -hmm. which was interesting. Um, and I think it ended up being like, I don't know, it was like two cents a podcast or something like that um, based on obviously oh. the, the length. But um, yeah, I thought that was interesting. That'd be worth a shot. I'd be happy to throw in a, like a few bucks a year. <laughs> <laughs> you're like we're covered i would eat half one half less avocado a year to cover the <laughs> <laughs> so, since apparently at our age everything is measured in avocados well also you have to you have to stop consuming something else to justify it for some reason like right it's like four coffees a, a month or like whatever the measurement is so chat gpt is able to parse video or audio content and pull out the, the well there was text. something where he was using the api or something and uploading a video and then it would spit out the transcript interesting um because i guess yeah. they just opened their api but obviously opened it to like paid consumption um so i think it depends on what you're uploading and the size of the the thing is, was my understanding but it was a brief scan on Twitter, so I yeah. don't pretend to be an expert. <laughs> no, that's that's interesting because I haven't I haven't looked at, at what's possible with the uh, Chat GPT API. I've just been trying to break uh, Chat GPT. We have uh, I have a developer I work with that uses it pretty extensively for, like, 
I've created this template in like blocks in WordPress. I've created this template in React, and now I need the PHP callback equivalent. Hmm. <laughs> Just or vice versa. Like here's the PHP callback. I need the um, edit JS or is it edit? I don't know what I've JS been files, wondering. Which I think I've, is great. It's funny. I've been wondering. Somebody I think somebody in the post status Slack uh, was talking about. Uh, chat gpt building out stuff and i i had no it wasn't post status it was at my it was at my work slack um he used chat gpt to build uh he did this demo where he used it to build um a one page sort of brochure page but then he went in and uh, mostly he just used it for like the text and it was like um it was like a, a one page uh thing for gray poupon uh, he gave it like the tone suggestion tone should be sarcastic. It should have images and, uh, and then he used Dolly, I think, to generate the images. Um, but I was one, like, it didn't look, it looked like he did the text and then it had maybe inserted breaks and stuff, or maybe described the types of page elements, but it didn't actually do those things. So I was wondering if he could do the exact same thing and say, but build this for me in, in Gutenberg and it would spit out like. Uh, legitimate, be pretty close legitimate code uh like gutenberg uh mark markup hmm. i'm still i every time i'm like i should try jet chat gpt i go to create an account and it asks for my my mobile number and i'm like oh yeah this is why i don't have one yet because I, I refuse to do it i'm not i just i just i mean i you know our computer overlords i i just use uh my google account um or you can use if you have a microsoft account you can use that um but I, I just use those things and do the SSO. I use Google and it asks for my name and then asks for a phone number. And I'm like, I'm not giving you a phone number. So no. I don't, I don't think it's asked me, but I do have my phone number added to my Google account already. So maybe I, man, that's why. Well, I refuse to do that as well. Yeah. yeah. And I think I so, gave it, I think I gave it begrudgingly, but then, yeah, I don't remember. I, I don't know why that's a line the, the, for me. The robot doesn't text me for what it's worth. No, but no, also totally... all of your research is tied to your account, which has all this other information. And with a phone number, you can buy demographic information. Like it, it... I mean, they already own all my demographic information. <laughs> I, I think... struggle. It. Uh... Yeah. I think it's fine that that's your line in the sand. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you need to explain it. It's. Cool. I, I Everybody's can't... got something different, right? So. I can't escape Google, even if I wanted to, um, because <laughs> because it's used as for everything at work including our cloud hosting so like i mean i definitely use google for worth it. personal email i use it at work actually i have two work email addresses one on google and one on microsoft so i mean it's like it's yeah it's everywhere it's a thing but oh, like, I, I, have a, I have a client that uses microsoft teams and i just i just it can't is so bad it's I don't, so and I don't bad. know whether it's because I'm a contractor and so I have like different permissions or whatever, mm -hmm. but like I have to sign on in the browser. I can't seem to use the actual program because my 2FA never works and like all this nonsense. When and... we were, um, when we were getting bids for our kitchen at the other house, when we were getting ready to, to move and wanted to redo the kitchen before we sold, um, one of the, one of the, th people we contacted was just Home Depot just to see what they would do and how much it would cost. Um, and they rec they used Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the same thing. It was like, like I consider myself pretty tech savvy. I work in tech. Like I, I do this sort of online call like for fun, obviously. Like yeah. um, this is not a new thing for me. And uh, it was legitimately a pain in the ass to, to work with Microsoft Teams. I had, yeah, I think it was the same thing. I had to download the app, but then the app didn't work. And then I had to log in through the web anyway and just like bring up a web browser. And even that was like weird. And like, like just give me a thing, just use a thing that works. I don't even, and this was just for like a, like a stupid like a consultation. Yeah. <laughs> now imagine like, like a showroom, like this is yeah. the sort of stuff that we do. Let me show you some web pages where we have pictures that you can, like, obviously you could have done this work on your own if I had just given you the link but we're going to talk you through it sort of thing like yeah. yeah it was really it was really dumb and it's problematic because you can only share your screen through the program not the not the browser and so mm -hmm. i'm just like me as a contractor i'm trying to show off 
like progress and like things and then I'm like trying to walk someone through it Mm. verbally or like having like okay click to your left (laughs) okay like and I'm just like this is like I'm lucky my client is just like even my client the people I'm dealing with are like oh yeah Microsoft Teams is stupid and I'm like well (laughs) you use a different tool (laughs) yeah why are we here (laughs) it's it's uh I mean I get Microsoft for big enterprisey stuff I mean it the my client isn't big enough to warrant it I don't think um and also so I volunteer just the at hosp- ecosystem it's yeah just I like volunteer at hospice and they're switching from zoom to Microsoft Teams and I'm like why are you doing that there's like cost savings 10 yeah. employees if that <laughs> like yeah but they're probably already playing paying for Microsoft and they're realizing like we can cut this zoom bill entirely and yeah. which What's really funny is that, um, so I, um, I have been watching a lot of stuff on, uh, dropout lately, which is a, the streaming service done by what the, the remnants of college humor. Mm -hmm. Um, and they do a lot of game shows and one of those game shows is called game changer, which is very much like this, uh, show, (laughs) honestly, because, uh, the point of game changer, game changer is the game is different every time. Um, and the, and the, contestants don't know what game they're playing um so they have to figure out through context and through the questions and through how points are allocated how to play the game and how to succeed um there's a card game like that called flux i think yes yes yeah. okay it's very very similar yeah a similar, similar sort of idea it's, it's a different thing but it's similar it's similar um i love flux uh aaron hates flux <laughs> which <laughs> I says a lot about the types of things that we enjoy <laughs> i find it i find it really divisive like you can really learn a lot yeah. about someone and about how they feel about it and you're like oh okay <laughs> um so there was obviously during covid they most of the streaming like most of their shows they weren't able to record on set so they did uh so game changer they did a whole season where it's all uh via zoom calls Mm -hmm. um and there was um and and so most of it is like this like the format is like looks like this screen that i'm looking at right now that if you're Mm -hmm. looking at youtube you're seeing like three pictures and then another picture on on underneath that's allison and and it's basically that thing when they put little you know borders and stuff and whatever in post-production but there was one uh there was one episode where they pulled in an actor and it was the actor who, uh, well, we were talking about Kaleidoscope a few episodes ago. It's the actor who plays the the, the sort of mastermind in Kaleidoscope, the black dude, uh, whose name I don't remember. But they pulled him in as a contestant. Um, and I think probably because he didn't know or have Zoom installed, they used something different. And I assume that it was Microsoft Teams or Skype or something because the because the video quality was considerably and discernibly worse. Like it was so much worse. It was like the chunky pixels that you that you used to that you remember from old Skype. Like it was like really, really gross to look at. And pretty much everything else that they do, which I assume which is why I assume it's on Zoom, uh, is pretty high quality because Zoom does pretty good video compression and it, it it respects the like the video settings of your of your Gary's wearing lipstick now apparently. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's your color. <laughs> is it not? I feel like it's a little neon. Okay, let me darken it a little. That's better. better? Um, More gothy, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, So I thought that was really interesting about... My eyebrows are also... Yeah, notice that as well, yeah. Um, uh, I I just think that's interesting when when you're comparing, like, the different tools. And even, like, like if you compare, like, Google Meet to... uh, um formerly google hangouts to zoom like the video quality is is discernibly worse yeah um, which is interesting like they've obviously made that one of the the things that that they want to stand out about about the product which is yeah i just it's fascinating how quickly uh there's there's actually like uh <laughs> Um, so they also had uh, College Humor also had this series of like uh, a message from the CEO uh, where it's the same actor. It's Brennan Lee Mulligan, who also runs uh, Dimension 20, the role playing game that they do. Uh, but he he poses as the CEOs of all these different companies and they do one that's really good that you can actually find on YouTube where he's the CEO of Skype. And he's like <laughs> talking about like like how everybody just 
dropped Skype all of a sudden to jump on Zoom and he's like like talking about how Skype had gotten to the point where it became a verb because that's like the thing like mm -hmm. in in tech where like like you don't search for things you google them like if you can become the verb for the thing that you do then that is that yeah. sort of like critical mass acceptance right and so Skype had gotten there and now now he's like now what like now you zoom like are you zooming <laughs> <laughs> It's so true though, because like Skype was basically how I kept in touch with my family long distance when I was in university and they were in California. Like it was just the only way because I was like, we're not paying a long distance phone. Yeah. <laughs> phone business. No. <laughs> what mm -hmm. uh what filter are you using here? <laughs> Who said anything about a filter? Um, I think I clicked on background and background and effects, and then was, yeah. studio effects. Studio effects. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I have. Oh, studio effects right there. But I. Oh. So you can do lip color. You can give yourself a mustache if you need to. <laughs> if you need to. If you need to. Or a goatee. Oh, a party hat. It looks like a piece of pizza. Oh, it's a pizza party hat. Okay. This is this is <laughs> actually really creepy because it's it's matching my uh, actual facial hair color. So like you can't even see. Uh... <laughs> what what is what is what is that? What is that background? Huh. <laughs> I'm a happy sprout. <laughs> I like we've, it. De we've devolved, everybody. We've devolved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well that's how people are doing the christmas light thing back yeah. around that time of year awesome all right so there uh, what i was actually looking for was there <laughs> on um on an old work computer i had this this thing where i could become like a cow yeah and i, I did i tell you all about my cow the cow no. thing we had going on no but there was a um you used to be able to you probably still can there's a snapchat app desktop app where you could use all the snapchat filters um, so i remember that yeah so in this case everybody was on zoom we were all on i don't know this was at red ventures and um there was like this big like tech meeting i don't know like several hundred people but the culture there was people would show up with cameras on regardless of how many people were there which was kind of cool it was fun you'd walk in you'd be like oh hey you know and um somehow there was confusion a meeting invite went out and then another meeting invite went out so it was like a split. So half the group was in one meeting and half was in the other. And the person presenting, the VP of presenting at meetings, was um, at the other one. So all of us in this first one were like, oh, are we in the wrong meeting? Or are they in the wrong meeting? And someone was like, they're actually in the wrong one because this is the updated one. We'll get them over here. We'll go get everybody from the other meeting. Um, when we come back, though, we want everyone to have some kind of like farm animal filter in place. So I, I don't know. So like the VP of presenting a meeting showed up uh, and that's really stunning, by the way, how <laughs> right? effective, like, it's like a totally different person joined the call. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. little. I, I, I did this one and I'm like, I'm, and I'm like, oh my God, I look, like the, lead singer of, I look like the lead singer of Anthrax. <laughs> it, it just, it like in the middle of a sentence, I'm like, oh, what, who? <laughs> who are you? Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, short story boring, like, these people from the other meeting started showing up and everyone was farm animals and they were like, oh, okay. So everybody started turning into farm animals. By proxy. And it was a sort of serious meeting and this guy's like, I can't present to you and you all look like farm animals. You're and old. everyone was like, moo? Question <laughs> mark? <laughs> like, cluck, cluck, cluck in the chat. It was amazing. Um, and then for days after, many people just didn't like bother turning it off. Um, until finally someone sent an email like, okay, the joke's over. Let's turn our farm animal off, which is when I bought a cow mask from Amazon mm -hmm. and showed up at my next meeting wearing the cow mask, but with the filter turned off. <laughs> <laughs> because why wouldn't you, you know? You it's also- like low, I, low hanging fruit, yeah. Yeah, and so I did. And and people were like, I don't, I just don't get it. There's nothing to get. Like it's not, it's not, it's not gettable. It's just a dumb thing. But. <laughs> But that's that's, a, that's well, culture. That's corporate culture right yeah. there. Like that's the that's that's like. Do you all remember um, at um, WDS when I tried to get everyone to change their name so it started with a J? Yes. Yes. That's still one of the best things I've done. Well, that's not true. 
I mean, it's easily top 25 things I've done at work. Because like half the company changed their names to starting with a J. They just replaced the first letter. It's wonderful. Or added a J. Allison, did you did you add a J or did you? Was it Jallison or was it J L L? J. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember if there was any logic behind it either. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. it got to the point where I was just messaging people and like, hey, can you change your name? You haven't changed your name. Everyone else has. I don't even think I, I was asking why. I just was kind of like, okay, <laughs> like, I've, I've got stuff on my plate and this will just be one more thing. It was the team I was on, half the team had a name that started with J and I just thought that was like yeah. statistically so strange. Well, I mean, also like half the people were with, with the same name, essentially. <laughs> half the people. That's an exaggeration. I'm just being- It wasn't though yeah, that day. That day, like half more, well, most of the company had a name that started, like, started with J. I did not include any of the uh, executive folks. And they were just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Someone was like, blame Gary. I'm like, I don't know anything about it. I'm Jerry, for starters. <laughs> yeah, first of all. Second, yeah, first off, who? Secondly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. I think I changed my lip color, but I can't even really tell. And now I'm like stuck in the abyss. <laughs> um, you just need to Chris, it, it is worth dramatic. flagging that by default, it will apply these settings to future meetings. So yeah, I, you're know. Going... I, I turned that off. Okay. <laughs> I was saying, just, it's just so you don't show up for like a future call. Well, this work. is this is my personal Zoom anyway. Um, and so I switch back to the corporate Zoom uh, after this. So so that we can get, you know, the benefit of being cut off after 40 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it, it probably wouldn't matter, but I almost <laughs> want to do I almost want to do this, uh, the, the lip color um and do like the goth lipstick uh on a on a meeting just to see if anybody notices or says anything um notices yes says anything will be the yeah right part, right yeah yeah i like feeling like i'm on a camcorder <laughs> <laughs> somehow yesterday i ended up on a youtube video explaining how um lenses work for um broadcast cameras all right um really fascinating I can't explain it, but really, I was gonna say, I was just like, and yeah, and I mean, what did you, you learn? Uh, I learned that they're they. When I what I've been thinking is, I see these huge lenses, and I'm like, dang, why don't they just upgrade? And the reality is, like, those are upgraded, like they're constantly mm. upgrading. Um, but the reason they're so big is because their zoom length and the ability to lock focus at a. How does that work? I don't know if about cameras to explain it as the problem. Um, but the video I watched was really explained a lot, but like lock focus uh, on a, a, a depth yeah. and then zoom in and out without losing that is called par focus, I think. Okay. And, um, and that's like a, apparently that's like, it, I mean, you can't do it with DSLR. Um, so that's part of like why it's so huge. And secondarily, yeah. there's um, all the other big stuff on there is, is really to dampen any movement from the operator so that the camera itself is very stable because you would pick up like, you know, any kind of wobble. So the whole unit is extremely heavy yeah. to dampen that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And all of the um, uh, adjustments to the lens actually take place on the handles, not because it's like a convenience thing, but because you don't want someone touching the lens that you've isolated yeah. all this movement from. You want them touching something that is also has like isolation yeah. from the rest of the unit. So it's really well engineered and kudos to whoever Kudos to camera makers. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Gary's to Gary. kudos of the week. <laughs> Shout out to the camera makers. <laughs> oh. Gary, what's your stock advice for the week? We haven't done that in a while. Yeah, we haven't done that in a while. Um, I mean, as weird as it is, Cracker Barrel still seems like a good buy to me. It's a a very well, let's say it this way. If you're if all you care about is profit, Cracker Barrel is a good buy. Uh, because clearly they're catering to a, a uh uh, one side of the country more than others. Uh, and, um, but it's a good dividend stock and they're currently um, undervalued in my opinion. So I think it's a good time to buy right now. Well, I might, Cracker Barrel. I might have to jump into Robin Hood. I'm actually closing my Robin Hood account. Or adjusting, um, my, adjusting my pies. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on M1 now because I, it just seems silly after doing taxes this year to like look at both Robinhood and M1. Like I need to consolidate some of this stuff. It's just silly the way I'm doing it. Yeah, I mean, I only use the Robinhood for the one-offs. 
Uh, I've decided I'm not going to do any more meme stuff. So <laughs> that which was what Robin Hood was great for. Was yeah. Like, yeah. Well, well, obviously. Why? Why else would you do it? Well, yeah. I mean that that in IPOs that you think might actually do a thing. Yeah, I think for the most part that's covered in M1. I think any IPO I'm interested in will be available in there. But I also I don't really touch IPOs honestly. Like I, the whole concept of the IPO is that if you have somebody a good bank representing you, like you should be hyped like crazy when you come up and it should be pretty well in line with the value. So one of two things happens, either you get overhyped and you tank yep, um, or you come in where you're supposed to be. And I think yep. it's very rare somebody comes in undervalued and swoops up. Um, if you've heard of the IPO, it's probably a bad one to buy. That's my, that's Gary. Look at that, a bonus stock tip. A bonus Gary. stock tip. Yeah. If you've heard of the IPO, you probably shouldn't be buying it. <laughs> you haven't heard of it though. How on earth are you buying it? It's weird. Uh, I bought, uh, into brilliant jewelry because we have actually purchased jewelry from them and because Robin Hood notified me that it was IPOing. Mm. That's how I heard about it and gave me like some sort of like opportunity to jump in on a pre IPO thing. Um, and then, and then get it when, you know, when they did actually get publicly offered so i'm really curious where digital ocean goes like because they're as a stockholder like eh, i mean they're 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 just sit, they're stagnating they're not i mean they're fine whatever but at some point that's a company that's right for acquisition like is it mm -hmm. is like cloudflare the right mm -hmm. one to acquire them maybe amazon doesn't there's no benefit to amazon is there actually benefit to cloudflare perhaps because cloudflare is an offer like a you know a droplet type solution but you know Maybe, I don't know if it makes sense or not. I just don't know where their growth path is. I don't know that, that CDN- This is boring. It is boring, yeah. <laughs> good, good content <laughs> no, for the end. I should have put the, I should have put the sleepy- <laughs> That was a great opportunity. <laughs> uh, oh, that unless... should be the sign off. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.